am going to sit. Yeah. All right. Hey. Keep it down. We're trying to record something here. I think I just sounded like Archie Bunker. <laughs> he did. Keep it down. That is that is Whoa. the book. That is the book that is my apocalypse <laughs> list. I didn't realize I was gonna print out in like nine pages worth of useless things that I don't need. Awesome. Is that your battle spread? Yes. Program? That uh, is battle not spread. as good as Army Builder, I don't think. Uh, I dare right say. Free. Actually, this looks really good. The free part is the part that is really. Oh, nice. it's free. Yeah. It can be. <laughs> not like a. That's awesome. Not like How a. How much are these candy bars, John? <laughs> They're free. Really free? Yeah, they well, can they be. They can be. No, okay. I didn't like. <laughs> I'm not saying I pirated the program. You can That's download awesome. Battle Scribe for free. They have a. a and that's how premium. little Timmy became a shoplifter. <laughs> they have a premium version that you can pay for if you want to. Nice. Okay. Great. It's just uh, it's a matter uh, of if they if it's the data files that they created or if it's the uh, data files Ren, that someone else sees creates. You. Yeah, Ren's doing a dance. Ren's dancing. So. Oh, this couch anyway, makes me sleepy. I got this uh, this fancy Astra Militarum book here. Yes. It's so, which, by the way, full. is the new Imperial Guard. Yes, it, is. it replaces and, this book right here. Right. So this is this is the new uh, the new book, and we're gonna I think go over some of the right. the winners and losers in the in the uh, new and book. And you know what? And, uh, unlike every book that comes out, I, I haven't read this yet. So yeah. So I'm gonna sit here and just be like, oh yeah, oh well, of course. <laughs> so awesome. let's start. Uh, let's start with some some HQ stuff here. Um, I'm going to do like point comparisons, that's why I have, uh, that's why I have both of them here. So, uh, in the new book, they, one of the big changes that they made was that you have to have, basically you have to have your company commander as your main HQ, if you take one. Okay. If you take like a, a commissar, like the Lord Commissar, yeah. as your main HQ now, he can only be your main HQ if you don't have a, someone with the officer rule. Okay. The senior officer rule. Well, that right. makes sense. Yeah. So it's like Was chain it like of that command. Before? No. Okay. It's called chain of command. And then they also took out a lot of the um, a lot of the things that were previously HQs, such as uh, Primaris Psychers and uh, and things. Well, actually, just Primaris Psychers. Primaris Psychers are now a uh, a no force sword zero to ah. three per per. Primary detachment. detachment. Right? Same thing with Midstorm priests. Oh, that's and awesome! Tech priest engine engines. Yeah, you're gonna see those now. Oh yeah. Let's let's start with Primaris Psychers. Yeah, they they from primary. seventy points to fifty. Okay. And they can take divination. Uh, so they're just little uh, little fifty point prescience uh, yeah. prescience bombs, basically. Wow. So that's that's a winner. That's that's the first so, winner and, right and there. And for the uninitiated. Prescience allows you to re-roll to, to hit rolls for ranged yeah. attacks. Yes. And, Which is and melee? And melee. It's a re-roll re to hits. So, at, yeah, so for 50 points you can have this power. What's the range on it? Is it 24? Um, I don't know off the top of my head what the range of pressure okay. is. It might only be like a 6 inch thing, but it's pretty much going to be, uh, you stick it well. in. Well, pretty much what I would do with it is you just attach them to whatever unit you really want to have the prescience, and right. then there you go. Yeah, it's like an right. upgrade. It basically, it's a 50-point upgrade right. to re-roll your hits, which is really nice. That's amazing. Um, so They could do it on a tank, too. Uh, I think yeah. maybe. Yeah, it might be non-vehicle units. Really? All right, you keep going. I'm going to get yeah. the rule book. Yeah, so we can Too talk. many questions. So we can talk intelligently. Too many questions <laughs> unanswered. All right, so next winner in the no-force no organization slot uh, is the Ministorum Priest. They, they reduced it by 20 points. And they had some pretty cool stuff before, like the Eviscerator was pretty cool because before they faxed it to be like a certain AP as opposed to ignores armor saves. Right. But now they have these battle hymns that they just pass like a leadership test. So is the Eviscerator AP2? The Eviscerator's gone. Oh, it's gone. Okay. It's gone, but they have three different prayers now. So basically they, they take a leadership test and then they can do one of these prayers. This is uh, reminiscent of the warrior priests. Right? Yes, yes, very much so. Okay, prescience is a war is a blessing that targets a single friendly unit within 12 in it, inches. Okay. Whilst his power is in effect, the target unit can reroll all failed to hit rolls. All right, so yeah, I mean... That's awesome. 
Probably can. What's the uh, warp charge thing of the primary Psyker? Uh, so it can be level one. It's level one uh, base, and then for 25 points, you can up to a level two. So, okay. I mean, you could theoretically get, like, some Ignorance Cover. You could get yourself some ballistics, full ballistic skill uh, Overwatch if you want to pay the points, or you can just spam a bunch of professional Psykers. I think that's what you'll see. Oh, yeah, I agree. So the prayers, um, the war hymns, as they're called, there's three different ones you can choose from. You get to choose. So either one... You and, or him and his unit can reroll failed armor and invulnerable saves. Okay. That's pretty good. He comes with a four-up invulnerable saves. He has a Rosarius, like a, uh, like a chaplain. Wow. So he can be a, a decent tank, but this is only in combat. So you can't do this if he's not in combat. Right. Um, another one is he can smash attack. So when you gain smash, smash is a special rule. Gives you, makes all your attacks AP2. Whoa. Or you can choose, elect to do a smash attack, which is the half your base attacks. Double your strength. Reroll armor pens against vehicles. So what would that make his strength? Uh, six. So he'd be strength six. Keep his AP two. So if he gains smash, he becomes AP two. Because okay. uh, Thomas read it to me yesterday. Smash confers upon you AP two attacks. Uh, All of the close combat attacks except Hammer yeah. of Wrath of a model with this special rule are resolved in AP two. And then, additionally, you can choose to make a smash attack, which has your base attacks, adds on modifi adds on the modifiers, doubles your strength, and re you re-roll armor pens. Yeah, re-roll armor penetration rules. So, okay. so he can he can smash attack, it's or not bad. the other one, which I think this is a really good one if you're if you're going to attach these guys to your just uh -huh. standard units. He and his unit re-roll failed rolls to wound. So when you're only strength three in combat, being able to re-roll all your failed to wounds can help you. Tack on a lot of extra wounds that you wouldn't normally have. I'm sorry I'm yawning so much. I was <laughs> up really early this morning. So, I say, I mean, you get zero to three. You can take zero to three of those, just like the primary psychers, per detachment. So, I mean, you can, for 75 points, you can have three of those guys adding all sorts of good stuff to your, to your units uh, as far as close combat goes. Obviously, um, even if you're just, even if they're just sitting there like, okay, if we get in close combat, I'm going to I'm going to help. Mm -hmm. 25 points is not a big investment to have that Whoa, extra. Whoa, they're help. 25 points? They're 25 points, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, incredible. I mean, they could take a plasma gun for 15 points and they could help sure, do why? some shooting. Sure. If yeah. you wanted. I mean, they have, uh, they're still just normal ballistic skill three. But, I mean, I don't see why you would really want to. Just have him keep his last pistol close combat weapon. And he has the Zealot special, which I believe gives hatred. Mm. So. We rolled to hit and to wounds if you get the if you get the right hit. So that's uh, that's another winner. And then engine seers are also a zero to three, no four no swords. Four sword. um, and what they can do, uh, they uh, do all the zealot same. Zealot has fearless and hatred. So okay, so there you go. So you can give. That's a, that's a whole reason to spend twenty five points to tack them onto your guard unit. Yeah. Fearless guard units. Right. I mean, that's almost better than the stubborn of the commissar. Yeah. I mean, aside from not being able to go to ground. This that's reminds me thing. a little bit about of the unit attachments from War Machine. Yeah. Where you buy a guy and then he just so instead of like in he War Machine, on them new stuff. you don't end up, you don't have a list where the guy has ten options. You don't have yeah. that. But you do have other things you can put in the unit. Go ahead. Right. So I mean, obviously, Fearless has its drawbacks. Like you can't go to ground. You can't. Uh, you can't. Uh, do other things like that, but Fearless does have its benefits for low leadership guard units. Um, so back to the engine seers, they're basically the same as they were, except that they gain a new power called Awaken the Machine, which allows them to give a vehicle within, I think, 12 inches power of the machine spirit, which is what can let a vehicle split fire or fire an extra weapon at its normal full ballistic skill. So that is uh, that can be useful. I, I, I imagine you could have like lists built around being able to split fire your vehicles or shooting like your battle cannon well, the, the and, Russes. Then, and then sh being able to shoot your your hull mounted last cannon to full list right. and things like that. So, Do the tanks still have lumbering behemoth where they can move nope. like six inches? And but they are they're qualif they're classified as heavy, which I'd like actually to oh, see what that okay, means. Okay, yeah, let's find what out. A, what being a heavy vehicle means. Because I know what a fast vehicle does. Oh, you, you keep going. Oh, I will. Yeah. Look at it. It means he's going to the gym, yeah. Do they even lift, bro? We don't even know. So, um, <laughs> so the company command squad, 
is goes it went up ten points for just like a base command squad, but all of the pretty much all of the upgrades you would might have given it have gone down. So like all of the uh, all of the regimental advisors decreased in points. The meta pack, which was the thing that gave him field no pain. I mean, field of pain is arguable if it's even worthwhile on guard or not because they're only toughness three. But it went from 30 points to 15. So, oh I mean, it's, it's a lot more uh, um, possible. I have heavy vehicles. Okay. Uh, they can never move faster than combat speed and can never move flat out. Okay. But for purpose of determining which weapons a heavy vehicle can fire and at what ballistic skill heavy vehicles are always treated as having remained stationary. So they can fire ordnance and then fire other yeah. other guns at snap fire. Treated. Well, right. it says, well, hold on. Combat well, you'd have speed. have to go see what it, what it means. Combat to speed is six inches, uh, right? Yes. And so they can't move flat out. I'll, they can I'll, I'll look that speed. up. All right. It sounds like it's the same thing. It could be, yeah. Um, so the the meta pack went down 15 points. The Foxcast are still the same. Um, most of the special weapons, like you get one to give a weapons team, that went down. And then. As far as it goes, I mean, the, the advisors are a bit changed. An astropath is, is now just a psyker. They don't, they don't affect your reserves at all. Uh, but they can only take telepathy. So I'm not sure I would take an astropath anymore. Um, Officer of the Fleet is now, uh, is now what does... E you can have him either do the plus one to your reserves or minus one to your opponent's reserves after you make a, wow. after make a leadership test. So That's awesome. Uh, that... He, that's actually a kind of a bit of a nerf. Because it used to be that the Astropath added plus one to your reserves and the Officer Fleet minus one to the enemy. Now you have to choose okay. each turn which one you want. Oh, okay. So, well, that's but you can have more than one. If you have two company command squads, you can have two officers of the fleet. Oh, okay. So you can add up to minus one. It's like good news, bad yeah, news. You can, you, can, you can negative your opponent's mo uh, reserves all the way up to past six, but on a six it will always come in. What? Yeah. So you can like that's you can stack incredible. it. You can stack it upon itself. Okay, I'm gonna predict you'll see that. <laughs> Probably. Because that's that's crazy. I mean, it, to make those flyers only come in on a six. Yeah. Like if you're playing chaos not, and they have oh, like yeah. three hell drakes, and it's like, all right, have fun. Wait well, until the fourth turn, most likely, right? Right. Because <laughs> it's auto fourth turn. Automatically right? on the fourth so, turn, but but then they're only on the field for right. at most three turns, right. which is less than half the game. Oh, absolutely. So that's incredible. Yeah, it's, it can be pretty good. So Astropaths, so I say you leave yeah. it all. Their Astropaths lost out pretty good, unless you really want the telepathy discipline of psychic powers. Okay. If you could check out what we have in there, see if those yeah, are sure worth bringing. I think you're past think, it. Yeah, they I should be. So. Yeah, here you go. There's Biomancy. And oh, uh, for heavy vehicles, it's um, yeah. So they they can never move more than six inches, but they can always fire everything. Oh wow! So yeah. they so. Sponsons on them got way better. Everything right. at full ballistic skill? Psychic Shriek. Psychic Shriek is actually pretty good. Yeah. So, I mean, that there is that. But it's all these things that's like, okay, this makes them better in close combat, better in close, and that's really not necessarily yeah. what they you, do. Yeah, depending on, yeah. well, okay, there is one command, company command squad, uh, or company commander, which would be Strachan. Right. Uh, Strachan used to be 95 or 90 points. Now he's 130. He went up a lot. But he... Is actually he's good and bad. Like there's, I, I think the the jury's still out for me if he's worth it. I mean, obviously he's a little more close combat oriented. Right. Uh, his warlord trait is one that lets his entire unit gain relentless. So okay. you can put like a last cannon heavy weapons team yeah. in there, and they can just move and shoot it. That's at, awesome. Apple whistle, which is nice. Um, he must always accept and and wow. issue challenges, which yeah. can be a downfall. He's mostly because he's only initiative three. He also has smash, so he has okay. eighty-two attacks at strength six. That's awesome. So that I mean that's really good, but he's only initiative three. So most right. things are going to go before. And Granted, he has a three up save. Always has to step up. Basically, power swords are his bane. Yeah. I'd say if you're going to go with him, you're going to want to take uh, Nork, Nork Deadog with him because I think Nork can always uh, step into the challenge. And take that okay. over over strike. That sounds very fiddly, right? That's you know? yeah. It's so anything it's, where you lose where you lose control of the game, like you can't make yeah, choices. Like old like old level. rage. Yeah. Like I mean, that's that's kind of a downfall of chaos characters. Anything with the champion of chaos has to issue any such challenges. Right. They, they they must challenge. So I mean, he's got a five up interval and a three up regular save. Back to Strachan here. Um, the cold steel and courage. And he he gives them. Um, 
Colosseum of Courage gives them counterattack and furious charge. Okay. So, pretty much yeah. always. Right. So, I, basically, the way I see it for it's him. It's all these close combat buffs for guardsmen. Well, you know. Strachan was always the most close combat oriented. Right. I mean, they're still Creed and Kel for sitting back, or just regular command squads with the relics, which we can get to. Mm. Um, actually, most of the relics aren't, aren't great. There's one weird one that's like a 60 point relic that I'm like, why would you ever pay yeah, for that? Yeah. Anyway. Back to Strachan here. Yeah, please do. <laughs> yeah, so uh, he's like, I mean, he's got the strength six, he's got the AP two. He no longer has like the reroll. I guess he has reroll to, from Smash, he gains reroll to penetrate. Right. He'll be strength 10 on his Smash because he's base strength six. Right. Oh, really? Yes. Wow. Because he's got the, the metal arms. Right. It's like Jax from Mortal Kombat. Yeah. I think he was in the Captain America movie. Yeah. <laughs> he's got Monster have you Hunter. Seen that? Not the new one. It's awesome. Continue. So yeah, he's got he's got Monster Hunter. So he's he's good against monster creatures. He's good against uh, vehicles. He's good against pretty much anything that doesn't have a power sword. Basically, what I would what, what you can do with him is sit him in some sit him in some some cover. Make make things like big nasty things like say demon princes charge you through the cover so they have to go to initiative one and then maybe maybe kill him. <laughs> Yeah. You might be able to kill them even before they get to you. But then, uh, so I'd definitely take Nork if you're going to bring Strachan. Nork's okay. sitting at toughness 5, feel no pain. So he's always basically always going to get feel no pain, um, which is good. He's got a standard 4-up save, which is pretty pretty nice. The, the thing he's got is the heroic sacrifice that lets him uh, step into the challenges. Um, he can... Exchange all of his attacks for a thunderous headbutt, which I think is like strength plus three and concussive. Strength is five. Yeah, so it'd be strength eight, and it would be concussive. It's almost like he's hitting with a thunder hammer. Wow. I'm not. Sure, I'm not I don't know if it's AP two or not, but it's wow. pretty good. Yeah, that that enough. would be a notable. I, does he just get one attack? Okay, it's actually AP three. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if he exchanges normal attacks in close combat for a single thunderous headbutt. Uh, it's that thing. You always see that. You can exchange it for one thing, and usually those aren't that good. Well, I mean, but strength plus three, attacks, AP three. He has three. four attacks. So four strength five attacks, or one Versus, strength eight AP yeah. three concussive well, attack. Well, it could be fun. The concussive part is what could make it nifty, because right. if you concuss them in your turn, they'll still be concussed in their turn, and then you can send Strachan in it as initiative three to kill whatever. Okay, see now you're thinking granted, it's room. Granted, that's an 85 that's point awesome. sacrifice. Yeah, well, but, together they're weighing in at over, just over 200 points. You know? Which, I mean, most like pretty nasty melee characters are going to be at least that, if not more. Right. Um, so, now... Creed and Kel are basically the same as they were. Creed gets two Warlord traits, uh, and he can roll them on different tables if he wants to. Oh, wow. Um, his, most of his stuff is still relatively the same. He can't uh, give something Scout anymore. Okay. Um, yeah, and that Kel, you can, I think you can only take with Creed, and he's basically the same as he was. So Yarick went down, I think, uh, like 40 points or something. And Yarick... Yarrick, yeah, he went down 40 points, and he can now issue orders. He's a senior officer, so that's actually really good. And he's basically the same as he was as far as, uh, as, far as um, stats, and stats and all that. Equipment. Pretty much everything. Right. Yeah, he's still got the, the claw. He's uh, still an eternal warrior. He, <laughs> he, uh, his warlord trait, which let's, let's take a second to talk about the warlord traits now. Five out of six of them are pretty darn good. There's one that's, that's mediocre. Which is the, I, or well, I guess you can you can take uh, if if you if you get number one, I think there are some guys that have it, um, which is is grand strategist. Is it, is it Creed? Well, Creed gets two, so he doesn't come with one. If you could find, if I think there's a, a guy in here that has grand strategist, because you can build, you could theoretically build an army around D three outflanking units, because I mean you can make pretty much whatever you want out flank. Like, you can have, say, I don't know, your entire infantry squad out flank. You can, you can build a list around it, but if you don't plan on getting it and you get it, it kind of becomes useless. And that's, right. But that's the, really the only one. Um, there's one that gives you, uh, the Warlord is you to get preferred enemy against whatever codex you choose. So against the one you're opponent. playing, obviously. Yeah. Draconian but discipline. But if they're taking an ally, it won't help you yeah. against that one. Draconian discipline. Mm -hmm. 
is is probably the one of the best ones. You don't have friendly units from this codex don't have to take morale tests for suffering twenty five percent more casualties. Okay. So you can shoot them up all you want. Within never twelve have, inches. Yes, within twelve inches. So your uh, your leadership six and seven guardsmen, conscripts, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, never have to take casual like casualty morale tests, which is pretty nice. The implacable determination is the warlord is you to have relentless. Uh, there's one that increases his your warlord's uh, voice of command range to 18 inches, mm-hmm. as opposed to the 12 inch order range. And then another one that lets him issue an additional order each turn. That's awesome. So most of those are, are pretty pretty good. So then when you get back to what you have here, Yara comes with the with the 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 third one, which is the nothing within 12 inches, has to take morale tests for, right. for casualties. Okay. So, Yarrick, uh, Yarrick definitely a winner, especially for a 40-point reduction, I would say. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So then you get to tank commanders. The tank, uh, the tank commanders. Uh, <laughs> it's a, basically a 30-point upgrade to a tank, essentially. You right. pay the cost of the tank, you add 30 points, you get a tank commander. Does now it make it, the ballistic skill go up? Ballistic skill 4. Uh, so you get a ballistic skill 4 awesome. tank. That can give tank orders, which tank orders are pretty good. Um, one of them lets you shoot and then pop your smoke launcher. So that's a good early game one to, to rattle off. It's, uh, it's called Strike and Shroud. Then there's another one that lets the tank commander shoot at a different target from, his, from anything that is in his unit. And then there's another one that lets them move flat out, moving up to 6 plus D6, even if they are heavy. Wow. So... There you go. That and since they have to be mounted in a Lehman Russ, that's yeah. where that rule comes in. So, so, so the tank commander can only be in a Lehman Russ then. Yeah, they can only be in Lehman Russes. And then, but as part of that choice, Any they can Russ. have up to two more. Yes, they can Russes. add. Uh, they can take their uh, their tanks and can be okay t- up to two additional. So, and let me throw out there that the Lehman Russ has two kits that are sold. Actually, and if I if I may if I may uh, interject here, he has to take at least one other Lehman Russ, but can take up to two. So he must have at least one other guy okay. with him, okay. but can take two. So yeah, there's He's the, not just rolling around in his own. No, head. no, no. Okay. There's the Lehman Russ. That's the battle cannon, uh, vanquisher, exterminator, which is the auto cannons, and the and the uh, I think the eradicator, the, the Nova cannon. Right. Which is like the, so the thing. giant plasma thing. No, that's that's the executioner. Okay. This is the like the right. atomic the subatomic blast. It's essentially, it's like the Norse cover one. Okay. Um, and then I don't the, remember that. Yeah, because no one ever played them. Right. I think that we played now. We'll get to that. Right. Okay. Uh, yeah, they're good cheap. Right. <laughs> um, so then the other box has the demolisher, the punisher, and the and the the. Execution, okay, if I'm not mistaken. So that's, that's yeah, I have to look at that. But anyway, we can magnetize those. Oh yeah, to be and even if it's, even if you only get like one variant, uh, you can have it magnetized for all of them, pretty much. Yeah. Well, and that that's that's what I would do. Oh yeah. Anytime I got a Lehman Russ, I would just do everything. Yeah, because the versatility of them. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's only a few like options that I wouldn't take ever per se, but. Who knows? They might become good at some point. So, and then you can upgrade your your tank commander to Pask, Knight Commander Pask, which used to be just be an upgrade to whatever Lehman Russ for fifty points. Now he's an additional forty points to the cost of a tank commander. Okay. But he comes with his crack shot ability now, which lets him, depending on what type of tank he's mounted in, which this is another big winner here is uh, is Pask because he's down points. And he gains additional, um, additional uh, abilities when he's shooting. So he used to just have like essentially monster hunter and tank hunter. Mm-hmm. Now he his crack shot shots by his Lehman Russ can reroll armor penetration rolls against vehicles, including glancing or penetrating hits. So if you glance and you really want to pen, you can try again. Um, Second result has to be kept, or you can, if you roll a pen and you really want to go for a glance because you don't want to explode in your guy's face or something. I mean, obviously that's always situational, but it's a nifty little thing to have. Um, the, and the turn mounted weapon of past vehicle gains an additional benefit depending on its type. So if you're firing a battle cannon, a vanquisher battle cannon, or the demolisher siege cannon, or the eradicator nova cannon, 
then pass can reroll this to hits. So that's pretty nifty. Uh, if you have an exterminator auto cannon or a punisher gatling cannon, then you gain rending. So the punisher, pass can a punisher, is now 20 shots, that blows skill 4, and then they hit their strength 5 and they rend. Wow. So uh, the AP dash on that kind of just took a kick in the pants because the ability to rend on sixes on the two wounds with that is really nice. That is that is uh, a heavy infantry killer right there. Terminators and, and Marines and really anything. Right. It's just it went from With just so being many a shots. lot of shots to Is it still uh what is it? Strength 20 five, shots? twenty shots. That's AP amazing. dash. Oh, and the cost of one of those went down forty points. Oh jeez. It went from 180 That's awesome. to 140 base. Wow. So for the cost of past Plus yeah. the tank commander. Do that. Yeah, I mean, that, that's really good. The other variety I personally think is really good, if you need this in a dedicated role, is him in the Vanquisher cannon. The Vanquisher cannon was strength 10 AP2, now a strength 8 AP2 armor bane. So it's going to get two dice on its armor pen rolls. He can reroll his to hit, and he can reroll his armor pen rolls. Wow. So, on average, you're penning a land raider every turn. Oh my turn. gosh, yeah. So he hits on a 3-up with a reroll. Yep. So only a 1 in 9 chance of missing. Yep. So almost a guaranteed hit. And then you get 2 dice on your pen. Right. And he gets to reroll that if he fails. So 8 plus 2 is an average... So an average roll is 15. Average roll pens a land raider. And so, basically, there's almost no chance you can't get a penetrated Yeah. Hit. So I think that's really... Yeah. Uh, pretty, pretty good if you know you're going to need some dedicated anti-tank. That is a lot of fun. Um... Other than that, I think him in the in the Punisher is the other good one. If you put him in an Executioner, um, then he can fire this uh, this iridescent or incandescent plasma blast, which is uh, same thirty six inch range, strike seven AP two, heavy one. It's a large blast. It has the blind rule. But the thing about Executioners now is that they have gets hot. Okay. They used to not. So they take a glance? They take they... a glance if they roll a one, and then they can't oh. shoot. Oh. So, like, one turn out they of the game. They can't shoot They can't ever shoot again? for that turn. Oh, just that turn. Yeah, so it's like that turn, I mean, that'll wouldn't happen. A one, wouldn't a one That'll happen once anyway? a game, probably. Like, that'll happen once a game, on average, right? So, I mean, once a game, you lose your shooting and take a glance. And... Hey, Janine. I don't know. Personally, I think that it made Executioners a lot riskier and probably not nearly as worthwhile. I mean, there's still Strength 7 AP2 and three three small blasts, which is still right. still decent, but... So wait, he would do three shots? No, no, just he, can, he shot? can choose to do the one giant the, the thing, one big right. blast if he wants to, with, yeah. the, with the blind rule. Okay. So, pass. Right, I'm going to start and stop so the okay. segment doesn't Absolutely. become too long. Like, I'm literally just sitting there yawning, I can and keep I'm going. sorry. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I'll stay behind the camera. Let's do that. Okay. Whatever you want to do. All right. That's what I want to do. All right. I love it. So, moving on to, like, your troops here, because, I mean, there's Lord Commissars, which went down a few points, and uh, only, only, like, five points, and regular Commissars are actually uh, just includable in Command Squads, Platoon Command Squads. They don't take up Force Organization slots. They're still only 25 points. I think that's a 10-point reduction, actually, depending on the squad you put them in. So, regular... I, I wouldn't take, like, Lord Commissars unless you really needed to keep it bare bones as far as your uh, your HQ. But even a regular just blank company command squad is 60 points, so... That's that. Uh, troops, you got your infantry platoons, which stayed relatively the same. The platoon command squad dropped 5 points. Um... Infantry squads are the same. Uh, heavy weapon squads look like they drop points. Uh, it's 45 base, but you they don't come with the mortar anymore. You actually have to upgrade them, and upgrading the mortars makes them the same 60 points as they were. So they're basically the same points. Their missiles can take flak missiles if you want. I think it's like 25 points per missile launcher for frag crack and flak, or just 15 points a missile launcher now. Um, Special weapon squads are, are 30 points for six guardsmen, and they have to... Hold on, can we explore this rules? just for a second? Sure. Uh, this says replace two guardsmen with a heavy weapons team. That's that's so in the actual squad, right? Yeah. Right. Is this, oh, this is different. Okay, I'm talking, I was talking squad. heavy weapon squads. For, right, is 60 points, comes with mortar. Well, now they're 45 points. They don't come with mortars. It's five points to upgrade right. with the mortars. 
So how much to upgrade to a heavy bolter? Um, for a heavy bolter, let me go check the heavy weapons list here. Okay. Okay, so heavy weapons list you're looking at. Uh, auto cannon or heavy bolter is 10 points per yeah, team. Yeah, so it's the same. It's exactly the yeah. same. Which so is good because they, 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 were, right. they were pretty well the right points in my opinion. Right. Um, conscripts are three points a model instead of like four or five or something like that. They're, you can get a whole mess of bodies if you really want to. Veterans went down 10 points base, and their Grenadier's Doctrine, which is the one that gives them carapace armor, went from 30 points to 15 points, so that's a real nice bonus. And then the Forward Sentry's Doctrine is, is still pretty cheap. Demolition's Doctrine is still pretty expensive. Harker's the same amount of points. Um, Chimeras are basically the same. Um, then there's the Toroxes, which I happen to think the Torox Prime for the Militarum Tempestus, the Stormtroopers, is the better version because it can take the twin-linked hotshot volley guns, which we'll get to those. Those are, those are pretty solid. Um, regular Toroxes, I mean, they're, they're 50 points for a 10-model transport that rerolls dangerous terrain tests without having to upgrade a dozer blade. Um, they come with a twin-linked autocannon, which I guess is a re-rollable two shots instead of a three shot. I think the, the Chimera for 15 more points puts out a little more firepower, just base. Um, but the Torox Prime can upgrade its like main cannon, it, it can upgrade. So you, I mean, you can basically put a, a Typhoon missile launcher on it for 20 points. So then it, that, that then it becomes 100 points, uh, it's, but it's supposed to skill four, which is really good. Um, it's still pretty lightly armored. It doesn't have the same survivability as, as say, that Landspeeder Typhoon. Um, has an extra hull point, but its armor is, and its armor is only slightly better. Um, but the fact that it can have the hotshot volley guns, so those are salvo 2-4, so at 24 inch range. So 24 inch range, it can put out eight strength 4 AP3 shots uh, just from its, from its, uh, or maybe it's only got one of those. Okay, it comes with one of those. Even still. Right. I like it, personally. Well, they're kind of like an alternative to a Chimera, really. They are. Um, I like the thing where they aren't affected by difficult terrain as much, where they, re -roll yeah, difficult they, terrain. Yeah, they re-roll to it. Right. So, going into our elites here. Sad day, Marvo's okay. gone. What? Sad oh, day. Oh, no! They took Marvo out. Oh, uh, Marvo. Maybe he'll come out in some sort of Catachin... <laughs> Right. Uh, yeah. Oh, he's going to be a data called? slate. It, no, Four well, ninety nine for the supplement. Rules from Katachin, maybe a Catachin right. supplement. Right. Right. I'm ready. Um, or something like that. Well, this or book sounds great slate, so yeah. far. I mean, oh it yeah. I mean, awesome. we're, we're not even to some of the best stuff, in my opinion. So um, you got Ogrins, which I mean, they're basically a, they're basically the same points as like Terminators. <laughs> I don't know if they're as good as Terminators. I'd say the Bulgrins are, are the better version, which are like more of the more of the close combat variety, but they have the they have four up saves instead of five ups with the same stat line. Um, and they get like the shields, they can take I mean they, they obviously can take transports just like the other Ogrins. Ripper guns aren't bad, really, but I think if you're going to take Ogrins, you're looking at taking them for the, not for their shooting potential, but for their combat potential as something to maybe slow down your... Now that's where you put the priest and the uh, other yeah, stuff in I, there. Is I'm there a reason sure. he can't go in there? I'm not okay. sure if they took that out or not. I know in the old book there was things that stopped people from well, getting Ogrin squads. Well, there were, um, there was, uh, it's dark and dare. Where they couldn't, they couldn't get in, in like the... chimeras unless they had a character with them, something like that. Yeah, I, yeah, it doesn't. I, I can't see any reason yeah. that they couldn't. So there you go. There you That's go. where you put your. Yeah, you can put a priest in there for sure. Close combat stuff. Uh, the only problem is like, say, Strachan. Uh, all the company commanders are just characters on independent characters. Oh, okay. So they can never leave their command squad right. or anything like that. So they're stuck in there, which it would have been great to put them with a unit of bolts. So that would right. be fantastic. Um, so what's the difference between Ogrins and Bulgrins? Bulgrins are have what's called a grenadier gauntlet, which has it's like a like a little short range grenade launcher and a slab shield. Um, 
and then ogrins have <laughs> slab have shield. ripper guns. So they're like shooting variety versus much more close combat variety. Um, they can trade their grenadier gauntlet and slab shield for power malls and brute shields. Power malls would make them strike seven, right? Uh, and AP four. Whereas the the gauntlet and slab shield was just basically close combat attacks, as far as I can tell. So I think uh, Ogrins aren't bad. I, I, I they look okay on paper anyway. Ogrins look less good on paper. I guess I'd have to see them in in action to make a final judgment on them. But I think they're definitely they're probably better than they were. Were I to guess, uh, Ogrins looks like they're actually. A, the exact same amount of points. Uh, their stat line is the same. They lost their Furious Charge. Gained Hammer of Wrath. Hmm. I don't know. Not, uh... Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say my jury's out on Ogrins and Bulgrins. And then, so, Ratlings are about the same, except they gain the ability to uh, run after they shoot. They still have infiltrate stealth. They're still the same points. So they have cheap, like battle focus, essentially. But they, <laughs> but it's it's not. They don't oh. get to choose. They have to. They run after they shoot. Only. Oh, okay. Or maybe it's the other way around. I think it. I, I'm pretty sure. Can it's, they shoot their sniper rifles and run? Yes. Okay. It's it's their special rule called shoot sharp and scarper. Scarper? I think they might have wanted to say scamper, but I have no idea. <laughs> oh, wow. What a typo. Scarper. <laughs> That's let's, awesome. I mean, I'm pretty sure it says the Quick, same. Quick, lads, let's scarp. Scarp out. Maybe maybe it's just a, a term yeah. we're not familiar with, because it says it right here, too. Okay. Rallies can make a shooting attack and then run in the same shooting phase. Scarper. Yeah, scarper. Okay, I'm ready. Go so, ahead. then we got Word Vein Psychers, which is the Psyker Battle Squad, essentially. Um, so, they're, they're level one Brotherhood of Psychers. For 60 points, which gives you five psychers. Uh, leadership eight, they can have up to ten. Um, and Brotherhood of Psychers, I'm pretty sure that rule gives them something special as far as like their psychic tests and whatnot goes. Uh, special rules. Okay. Well, I, I think Brotherhood of Psychers as a rule just disentangles the thing where they're like acting as a group. Oh, really? I don't think it makes them more powerful at all. Okay. Here, I'll, I'll look it up while you move on. Okay. Well, Brotherhood of Psychers. The unit uses the leadership of its character, if there is one, or the unit, if there isn't a character, which there's no characters in here anymore. There's no, like, overseer or anything anymore. Right. Uh, if the unit suffers the perils of the, the warp, it's resolved against a character, if there is one, or against a random non-character model, if there is not. And that's, that's literally it. Uh-huh. So... Yeah, yeah basically it just, just, it just makes, disentangles yeah, the thing that they're Yeah, it basically just makes them act as a group. So, uh, I mean, they can take, they can still take a, uh, a transport. It's 12 points per additional Psyker. I think that's, I'm pretty sure that's an increase uh, in a bad way. Yeah, they were 10 points each. They used to have the Overseer. They used to be Leadership 9, they're only Leadership 8 now. I mean, in my opinion, there's no reason to take this when you can get Primary Psychers. Right. Unless you really need that extra divination. Right. Um, so they don't do the thing where they lower the leadership of an enemy unit? Nope, they, they lost all their own powers. Okay. So they don't have this... I, I personally like Soulstorm, which was strength of the number of Psychers, right. AP D6. Right. So you could get like a strength 10 AP 1 or 2 large blast, right? right? That's awesome. I liked that. Um, the only actual interesting thing, which isn't... Actually, that interesting. Okay. I mean, it's interesting to me for like yeah. a fun list, right? <laughs> yeah. They can take biomancy, and theoretically, okay. the biomancy power would affect all of them. So if they got yeah. like iron arm or something, right, <laughs> it'd be just kind of silly. I mean, they're sitting at weapon skill two, strength two, so it's really right. not going to do that much for them. Yeah. But if if they had a slightly better stat line, maybe they could have done. Maybe that could have been something. Who knows? So, like. So yeah, like I said, just a silly list idea. I uh, honestly, I think you leave those at home. They they were a big loser in this book, the the, the battle squad, the psycher battles squads. So now we get to the the Militarum Tempestus, which they have their own book. 
I haven't actually looked at that. I think that's just if you really want to do like an entire army of them and you want like their command spots, which could actually be good for the reason I'll get into here. Uh, the, the platoon in here must include one between one and three the scion squads and may include the command squad. Uh, you're looking at 85 points base for the command squad, 70 points base for the scion squad. And the scion squad starts as a five-man unit. So this is what you, you have to take at least one of. And this is how I would run it. I'd run it as just the basic five-man unit, and then you up, can upgrade two of them with the hotshot volley guns. The hotshot volley gun is the 24-inch 2-4 salvo, straight 4 AP3. So you get two of them there, and then you take your command squad, 85 points, and then you upgrade all four of the veterans to have those volley guns as well. Oh, okay. So that's... Now you're talking. You're looking at 16 shots of strength 4 AP3. Okay, they don't can move. they go in a Taurox? They can take a Taurox Prime. Okay, or so here's my question. Or a Chimera. Inside of the Taurox... Can they shoot? How, yeah, how does uh, that there's, work? I think there's two fire points on either side of a Taurox. Do they count as being stationary? Um, how does that affect believe, Salvo if the Taurox is flying around? I believe as long as you just move at combat... Okay. As long as you move at combat speed, anything inside can fire at full ballistic skill, okay. and you count as relentless. Okay. So if you move... And since it's a fast vehicle, it can go 12 and still count as combat speed. Right. right? Okay. So, but, uh, sorry, going to the... Uh, now it's breaking. To the dedicated transport, Taurox Prime. Oh, actually, I have to go to its, its actual entry here for, um, for its firing points. Did I skip it? I didn't. Toroxes. So your Torox Prime has two firing points, so that means two models can fire out of it. So you... I would put... Two models. Two models can fire out of out That's of, out not of, that many. And it's one on each side. Right. That's not that great. It's not. No. It's not like the Chimera you can pop the top and have a 360. Right. So yeah. if, I were, if you were going to put anything in a transport, I'd say you'd put your normal Scion squad in the transport, and then in, in a Chimera in particular, right. and then just have the two, the two uh, volley guns pop the top and shoot out. Right. So, yeah. Okay. It's le little so less timer out or can only have two guys fire out of the top. I Actually, thought they could, they could have six. They can. Uh, no, two got two models can fire out of out what? of top hatches. They have the the last gonna raise. Oh, okay. Well, let's actually wow. let's talk about that. Okay. Those only ever fire at the tanks plus the skill of three. So putting veterans in them doesn't help anymore. <laughs> okay. So those well, and thank they only fire the last guns, that. right? It's like yeah, those took a bit of a hit. So. You have your command squad. They they can shoot sixteen of their of their of the salvo shots, right? So then you can couple that with having the divination psyker for prescience, so you can reroll your hits, which is nice. And then you can also add in orders to that, which okay. we'll we'll take a so a, brief a break lot of synergy. Oh yeah, we'll take a brief break for orders right now. Uh, okay. A lot of the orders remain the same. First rank, second rank is the same, uh, and it's. Specifies that it works for hot shot las guns as well. We can basically okay, just get through ahead. the elites here. Um, so first rank, second rank works on las guns or hot shot las guns. So the hot shot volley gun is a hot shot oh, las okay. gun. So it can that would give it a fifth shot per. So that's twenty shots, which with the divination that amounts to on average eight AP three wounds right. against wow. you know standard toughness four types of uh, space marines. Or if you know they're in some in some nasty cover, you do the. Uh, there's so that's one in what here. you do. You put the. Uh, well, yeah. There's one. In, in, there uh, there is an order in here that thing. gives them um, ignores cover too. So you could get six AP three ignores cover wounds on tough against tough as four things. If, so if you really need to kill something behind an Aegis or whatever, uh, that's that's probably the better way to go for that. So a lot of. Uh, so using the orders and the and the primary ciphers with that is going to yield to pretty good results. That's great. So I mean, a standard list, a standard book. I mean, you're looking at like 215 points or something like that to take a single five man squad with the two volley guns and the command squad with four volley guns three times. Uh, each. Oh, so it's like 215, 215, 215. 215. Oh, okay. So I mean, that's like 600 that something adds up. points. Right. But. That can put out a lot of a lot of firepower. Yeah, that's amazing. So, well, that's that changes the possible complexion of what you can do with guard. Oh yeah. I mean, it used to be you would take veterans, which I loved, or you could take these giant blob squads, yeah. which people blob will squads. still do. Oh yeah, blob squads. That's are still what you good, take IG for. Because you don't even need allies to give them the divination pressure anymore. 
Do you just do it with a 50-point little psyker? Yeah, that's so, awesome. I mean, it was nice to have, like, like for instance, I would do it with a Blood Angels Terminator librarian, stick it in front with a storm shield, and he'd be sitting there like, I will absorb all these wounds for you. Right. You know, that kind of thing. But, um, yeah, I, and obviously that is doable on a much larger scale with the military of Tempestus book itself. Right. So, fast attacks. Uh, scout sentinels and armored sentinels, they went down in points. Penal Legion's gone, by the way. Okay. Um, scout sentinels are actually the same points cost. Armored sentinels went down by 15 points. I don't. I still don't think it makes them worth taking because they're walkers and they're light armored. They you can't. It, you, they'll never be able to roll as many dice as, like, say, Eldar warwalkers for right. for similar points. Hmm. So I'd say those are are worth skipping, especially in the fast attack slot. There's a lot of things vying for your fast attack, mainly vendettas. Right. Uh, Rough Riders are actually still in the vendettas book. Vendettas still rocking it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty pretty confident they're still good. Uh, Rough Riders made it into the book. There was a lot of talk that they weren't going to. They're they're still there. As for well, there's no model for them. Oh no! Wait, wait, there is a model. There is, but it's so it's dated. Old. It's so bad. Yeah, uh, I'm not. I don't. I don't know about Rough Riders. I mean, I know cavalry as a unit type is pretty good. Look at Thunderwolf cavalry, but then again, Thunderwolf cavalry add a lot of things to their riders that right. regular. That yeah, these guys let's don't. not make that comparison. Uh, you're right. The hunting lances are AP three. On, on the, the charge, charge. Only? I don't know if it's on the charger or yeah. all the time, but I think they can only use the lance on the charge, and then they have a close combat weapon. So it's basically right. if they don't win on the charge, they're not going to win. They're pretty cheap, though. I mean, eleven points a guy isn't too bad, but I don't really see them as as viable in the fast attack slot. Um, Hellhound squadrons. You're looking at uh, actually the. Almost the exact same points. Hellhounds are down to 125 from 130, so slight point increase there. The uh, the Devil Dog's actually more expensive, but I wouldn't actually ever take the Devil Dog. That's the like the Melta Blast. Right. It's not the best in my opinion. And then Bane Wolves are the are the Flame Template Poison Two Up AP Two. Right. Uh, thing. And they're the same amount of points. The only problem with them is was always that they just have to get so close because they don't torrent like the Hellhound right. does. The torrent is everything. They're still all fast vehicles. They're range. still all 12, 12, 10. Um, all of the equipment, like all the, the vehicle upgrades are a lot cheaper now. Like camo netting is, is down from like 30 points to 15. So, I mean, you can make them a lot more survivable uh, for cheaper. But Hellhound squadrons are still pretty good. Uh, Valkyries... Valkyries you're looking at, I mean, they're, they're base 125, or base 125 points, which is a 25-point increase. Um, they're basically the same as they were, except that rocket, multiple rocket pods, which happen to always be my favorite, are 20 points cheaper. Um, Spons and Heavy Bolters, I think, are slightly cheaper. Actually, no, they're more expensive, just kidding. And uh, the last cannon upgrade is slightly cheaper from the multi-laser. Um, I always used Valkyries when I ran them as like anti-infantry and saved anti tank for the vendettas. Uh, so I would run them as multi-laser and multiple rocket pods, just see how many dice you could throw out. And that's that is still about the same price as uh, as it was. So that's good. The vendettas are up forty points base, but that was probably necessary. Whoa, up forty? Yeah, they're one hundred seventy points now, but right. they were base. I think they were arguably the best flyer. There. Right. Three twin link glass cannons with the flyer rules for transport. With the Did their 12... abilities go up or down with the forty point increase? Uh, they lost six a six transport uh, okay. capacity, so they're only at six transport now, um, which I think is fine. Um, I mean, you could still squadron them. The forty point increase was just something was just something that needed to happen. Basically, it was a sign of the times. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like they were. They were written in as they were going to just basically be a skimmer, right? right? A fast skimmer is what they were when they were written right. at 130 points. They've lasted this long in 6th edition. They got a huge buff. and they, With they, the flyer rules. Yeah, yeah. So I, they're still 12, 12, 10, 3 hull points. I had 3 twin link glass cannons makes them one of the best right. anti-enemy anti flyer, anti-tank vehicles right. out there. And I think 170 points is 
is still a very competitive price yeah, for them. You're still going to see They're those. not just brokenly overpowered. I mean, maybe you won't see nine Vendetta lists anymore because of, I mean, that that's an increase of, what, 360 points? Right. Um, but I still think, I still think you know, you'll see some Vendettas. I still think they're really good. So heavy support. We went over the Lehman Russ variants to some extent, but the ones we didn't talk about is is as far as uh, what winners and losers. Let's see, does anything else get taken out in there? No. Actually, they got rid of uh, the character. The character for the Rough Riders is no longer in the book. Right. Mogul come here. I don't know how good he was or anything like that. But well, you know, a lot yeah. of Imperial Guard fans are going to be very disappointed that that's not. Yeah. There. I mean, they they took out a few other characters <laughs> too, like uh, nope. like. Uh, Sergeant Bastone's gone. Right. That he was a veteran upgrade. Uh, Chenkov is gone. He, he, he'll probably repop up in like a uh, a Australian right. supplement. Uh, Captain Al Rahim is gone. He'll probably pop up in a Talar yeah, Desert Raiders. These all Raiders. have something in common. They'll pop. He'll pop up in a Desert right. Raiders supplement, I imagine. Um, so all the characters that were removed were were more of the non Cadian, non Cadachin type characters, like. Right. It's strange to me that Marbo would be taken out, but Harker would be left in, and Strack would be left in if they were going to do a Cadishan supplement, so it, it more okay, seems right. to me like the Mycetic Spore type thing, if right. you know what they, I mean by they that. They didn't have models. They didn't have models for it for a long time, or they had a very updated model. People made their... Okay, go. Uh, Death Strike's the same, except the campfire on the first turn, so if you spam them, you can't just roll a bunch of dice and hope you get roll a six <laughs> and get it to fire. Um, they fire a 10-inch blast, though. Pretty nice. Wow. Um, 10 inch across diameter? Yes, 10 inch diameter. Um, so, uh, other than that, I mean, that's that's pretty much everything as far as nuclear the launch detected. Yeah, right. Uh, the orders that I didn't touch on is one of them gives your unit precision shots, which can be nice if you really need to take out certain mm -hmm. uh, certain things. You can wow. give, you can give your or your unit split fire, which could be nice if you have like a heavy weapons team in there. They can shoot something different if you pass mm -hmm. a leadership test. Um, we went over first rank, second rank. You can have an order unit run after it shoots. So kind of a battle focus type thing there. Um, move, move, move is the same. Suppressive fire gives the weapons pinning. Um, you can gain tank hunter and monster hunter from a senior officer. Uh, then there's the ignores cover and the get back in the fight, which is the one that lets them rally no matter what. And, um... Yeah, I mean, uh, there's some cool vehicle equipment. The, the relic plating gives adamantium will. It's only three points. I would put that on my tank commander. It's a tank because if anyone's going to cast psychic like, powers, it's probably going to be at your tank commander um, as far as that vehicles goes. Uh, recovery gear gives it the ability to repair, but it doesn't have to like forfeit anything like a rhino would if it's immobilized. So the repair only gets rid of immobilized results, kind of like rhino repair. Right, and then uh, fire barrels is uh, basically gives you a D6 strength for AP5. Okay, you're on again. All right, so heavy support. So Neiman Russes, the basic battle tank. Oh, by the way, we have six minutes left. Okay, sorry. The basic battle tanks, same points cost, still good. Always, always will be. Uh, the exterminator is down 20 points, but that that's the t two twin linked auto cannons. I don't really see that as something you want on your Lehman Russ chassis if you're gonna if you're gonna spend the points for a Lehman Russ chassis. There's definitely better options. If if you need auto cannons, there's plenty of other places to get much cheaper auto cannons. Um, Vanquisher is uh, is down 20 points as well, and that's like the we were talking about Pask in the Vanquisher. I don't think I'd ever take a Vanquisher that wasn't Pask in the Vanquisher. I think his ability is what really brings it over the top to something that's that's very useful. Um, if you and if you need like very a lot of dedicated anti tank, you can get it in your vendettas. Um, the Lehman Russ Eradicator, that's the Nova Cannon one, which is I believe strength six AP four and ignores cover. Um, it's kind of a, an infantry killer, thirty six inch range. So I mean, you're looking at and that, those are one hundred and twenty points. That's that is the thing about it that makes it. Well, makes it worth bringing in my Wait, opinion. what's 120 points? A Lehman Russ Eradicator. That's awesome. Oh, wait. Okay, that's the old book, yeah. I mean, that's that's a 40-point reduction. Yeah, a 40-point reduction for that. And the, yeah, the Eradicator Nova Can, Strength 6, AP4. It's a, it's, it's a heavy shot only, so, I mean, 
well, heavy tank, so it does, it's not ordnance. Right. Uh, it's a large blast. It ignores cover. I mean, that is that is the the super bane of your your nids, your your Eldar stuff, your uh, other guard. Uh, I think the Eradicator is a big winner, especially for a 40-point cost reduction. That's a 120-point Lehman Ross. It's a 120-point 14 front armor tank. That's that is that is good. Uh, now, the, are, are all the Lehman Russes reduced? Uh, no, the main battle tank is is the same. Uh, the Exterminator, Vanquisher, Eradicator are reduced. The Demolisher is actually five points more expensive. That's a strength 10, 24-inch mm -hmm. range cannon. Right. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know how I feel about Demolishers. I think, I mean, if you really need the strength 10, yeah, bring them. If, you're, if you know you're playing Plague, Plague Marines, definitely bring strength 10. Um, pay, the, pay the points. The Punisher is down 40 points. So it went from 180 to 140 for the for the 20 shot Gatling gun. So that's definitely that's awesome. a win. And then the executioner uh, went from 190 to 155. So I mean, 35 point reduction there for, but you gain the gets hot. So um, I mean, obviously, it's it's slightly riskier, but less risky because of the points. So it maybe it bounces out. I guess that's. Uh, it remains to be seen. Right. If you're super unlucky with it, then it can it can be bad. But if you if you never roll a one, then sure you can go ahead and take them. Um, the the like sponsons are relatively cheaper. Uh, heavy bolters are the same. Flamers are cheaper. Plasma cannons are ten points cheaper. Multi meltas are ten points cheaper for uh, for your sponsons. So you're looking at just general overall sponson point decreases for the most part. So that's pretty good. Uh, Hydra batteries they were seventy five points a model before. Now they're seventy, so slight decrease. Camo netting is much cheaper to make them that much more survivable in cover, especially if you take an Aegis. Uh, you're looking at three up cover saves, which is pretty good. Um, they still have the Skyfire. They're still your two twin linked heavy two uh, thing. Uh, ordnance battery is gone. All you can take now are basilisks, which are the same amount of points each and do the exact same thing. Um, I'm not really a big fan of basilisks, never was. So I don't think they're that good. Uh, in place of the griffin, you've got the, the wyvern, which is in the new in kit. In place with, of it? In place of it. Or you can it. make a griffin or a wyvern? No, the griffin, the griffin heavy mortar is gone. Is oh, okay. I mean. Uh, the, the new mortar tank is the Wyvern, which is in the same uh, kit as the Hydra. Mm -hmm. And this comes with two twin link Storm Shard mortars. Now, a Storm Shard mortar is a uh, two shot mortar that has heavy blasts, and with twin link, you get rerolls. So, one of these tanks is going to put out four of those blasts. It's almost like a, a, it's a six, I mean, they're 65 points a piece. You can have three of them. That's 12 small blasts that you could do. Wow. Strength 4, AP 6. Uh, and they have shreds, so they re-roll to wound and they ignore cover. It's like a biovore yeah, type so, effect. Like, you get people out of the backfield with that. Oh, yeah. At 48 inch range, I mean, they're, I'd say they're pretty good. That's a it's, huge deal. Especially in only 65 points, 12 small blasts. Against a gun line. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, for two, you know? I mean, it's, it's relatively comparable as far as, like, the, the points goes. I'd say 35 less points to, like, Thunderfire Can. Thunderfire Can is a little more, uh, a right. little stronger. But and then you have the Manticore and the Death Strike, which... Uh, the Manticore went up. John's trying up to get points. this done in 45 seconds. Yeah, the Manticore went up 10 points. Still Hold on a good. second.